Warm greetings to you from the Southern Counties Baptist Association team. The candle behind me that's lit is one that was lit yesterday. It was uh, during a Zoom gathering of our grown-up family. Our daughter and son-in-law and granddaughter and daughter and her fiancé and our son scattered across Oxfordshire and Bath and Munich. All of us were able to gather and use words that we'd used many times before. The words that we first started using about 25 years ago and uh, we would light a candle and say some of these words each Sunday of Advent and then on Christmas Day. And because the name of the booklet that I got these words from is not very inspiring, it's been known as simply ever since Maranatha. Maranatha because of the prayer that we say for giving thanks for the food. Maranatha, come Lord Jesus, be our guest, let these gifts to us be blessed. Keep us always in your sight, be our joy, our heart's delight. Something in our homes to celebrate God's goodness and God's coming. God's coming that first time at Christmas, God's coming and return that second time to join heaven and earth and uh, all things to be as God wants them to be. But a different sort of arriving of God afresh into our hearts, into our, the room of our lives, into our houses and uh, overflowing into the whole of life. And of course, really important at this time in this year, because so much of what we've done in life and in trying to relate to one another has been from our homes and into our homes through broadcasts and podcasts and Zoom and all the different things that you've become familiar with. And the once we do that, it looks as though we started to remove our faith and who God is even more from everyday life and the wider world than usual. It looks like we've been been seduced into something very devotional and private and pious. But actually, uh, far from it, and far from it if we allow ourselves to reflect on the first chapter of Luke and what it tells us about Mary's own experience of saying yes to God and making room for God. For Mary, of course, making room for God was in her own womb. It was that unique expression of yes to God. It of course had much wider consequences for her in her relationship with Joseph as we've explored perhaps many times before and in where she would end up spending the next couple of years of her life. But more than that it had wider consequences because Mary realised not least as she went to see her relative Elizabeth who was also expecting just as she'd been told Mary realised that actually whatever God was doing in and through her, however much favour she was receiving, it was not just for her or even those closest to her, it was for the whole world. It was for the hungry, it was for the poor, it was a challenge to and an insistence on justice with those that were proud and powerful and rich. So personal yes, Affecting those just on the edges of our lives, yes, but also for the whole world. And so, as we find ourselves with great sadness, reflecting on this year perhaps, and with uh, regret for the fact that even as we approach the end of the year, we cannot fully celebrate and be with one another as we would like. So it is that actually in celebrating Advent, in looking forward to Christmas in our own homes, we are still expressing our commitment to following Jesus, not just personally, but to seeing the kingdom of heaven happen and come on earth. Making room. The knowledge of God filling the whole earth as the waters cover the sea. Everything that's implied in the temple Everything that's implied in Jesus as the new temple happening in all places and amongst all people, making room.
So when we personally say to Jesus that we're ready for him, that we anticipate with great love and longing his kingdom, that we mourn the gap, but we want to be part of the bridging of the gap, we are saying something which is both macro and also, as it's been historically, micro, micro church in our own houses, we follow Christ and get established in faith. Making room. We can say, there is room in my heart, Lord Jesus. There is room in my heart for thee. And we know that actually it's a big prayer. It's a big challenge. It's captured well by Margaret Halaska in her poem, Covenant. And perhaps as we pause for a moment, prayerfully, uh, this is a time to receive and to hear God's invitation again to make room for, for him. The father knocks at my door, seeking a home for his son. Rent is cheap, I say. I don't want to rent, I want to buy, says God. I'm not sure I want to sell, but you might come in and look around. I think I will, says God. I might let you have a room or two. I like it, says God. I'll take the two. You might decide to give me some more some day. I can wait, says God. I'd like to give you more, but it's a bit difficult. I need some space for me. I know, says God, but I'll wait. I like what I see. Hmm. Maybe I can let you have another room. I really don't need that much. Thanks, says God. I'll take it. I like what I see. I'd like to give you the whole house, but I'm not sure. Think on it, says God. I wouldn't put you out. Your house would be mine and my son would live in it. You'd have more space than you'd ever had before. I don't understand at all. I know, says God, but I can't tell you about that. You'll have to discover it for yourself. That can only happen if you let him have the whole house. A bit risky, I say. Yes, says God, but try me. I'm not sure. I'll let you know. I can wait, says God. I like what I see. I love what I see. Making room for God. Saying yes to God, celebrating and receiving God afresh. And so a prayer, and then feel free to sit quietly with God and God with you after this video reflection has finished. Maranatha, come Lord Jesus, be our guest, let all gifts to us be blessed. Keep us always in your sight. Be our joy, our heart's delight. Amen.